What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another Arsenal Evo RTG. Today I think we're going to have some more Rivals gameplay. I need to get a few more Rivals wins. I think three more wins needed to get the, um, the reward set that I want for today where, as you're watching this. Yeah, I need three more wins. But I also really would like to get into Division 1 um, before the thing trades over. Um, I'm going to be changing the team a little bit and that might be based on who we do or don't pack from these picks and 84 by 7s I've also built a load of exchange packs trying to preemptively get rid of some of the common fodder that I get from these um, but of course if you guys are enjoying the content and you wouldn't mind dropping a thumbs up it would be very much appreciated and also uh, the team of the week that's in packs right now guys is officially from EA Sports the, oh lovely the final team of the week that's it I am very excited to figure out or to learn, oh dearie me, what is coming in place of it. I know obviously they could just use Team of the Seasons. Oh, good Lord. Team of the Seasons in um, in place of them in SBCs. That's one thing. That, that was awful. That was actually awful. We got an 86 and 85 that I didn't take. Two 84s and an 83. These 84 by 7s better be way better. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what... A fourth are going to give us instead of that team of the week. We've got ourselves a special card. It's Spain. It's it's going to be I Medical Laporte. Oh no, it's not. It's going to be Irene Paradis. 88 rated. Very nice. I got rid of all my 88, so that's okay. We have got one of the brand new team of the weeks. Who's it going to be? It's what a pack. Three 88s and 87 Pulisic. He look, I mean, he looks all right. He's got a better card in the game, of course, already, but he looks okay. The 84s were just going to uh, discard, as you guys know. 84s will not even sell these days for 1,100 coins minimum price. So we just throw them away. Next up, no special card here. England, right wing. Be Beth Mead, please. Double walkout is nice. It is Beth Mead. I might already have a Beth Mead in the club. We also get... I love the gold double walkouts, an 89, because it leaves the chance of icons and hero Golazo cards in here. Just a chance. Doesn't mean they're going to be there. They're not going to be there. And I do already have Beth Mead. And I will quick sell recover her just for the aid of time right now. I'll discard so we can get into the third one and see what we pack out of this. So 187 Beth Mead needs to be pulled back. From the depths. We're going to get in the last one. Brazil. CDM. Man United. It's Casemiro. Be a double walkout. Yes, please. 289 plus is guaranteed. It's Benzema. He's a dupe as well. Typically, the way FC24 works and FIFA's worked historically is if you get like two mad players, there's also other mad players in there. I'm actually, I'm 100% certain there is a promo card or an inform in here as well. Am I right? Okay, so um, that 100% certain wasn't very good. An 89, an 87, and a 90. They were way better than the, uh, the 83 player picks. But just to give us another chance of hitting um, a promo card to put into the team for the next run of games, let's go and build ourselves some player picks. All right, guys, we've got 20 player picks. What I was thinking is maybe we put that uh, Robbie Keane into the team. I packed him twice now, the 91 or the top version, whatever it is. And uh, we haven't actually used him in any gameplay. Uh, so I wouldn't mind trying him out. And although I didn't enjoy him the first time around, I just wouldn't mind trying out that uh, Viali card again. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's good. Maybe he's not. But I feel like I wasn't playing my best when I was trying him. So I want to try him uh, whilst I'm... I feel like, at the very least, I'm playing better, you know? Uh, but anyway, with that being said, we've got uh, 15 more of these to try and get some more fodder. Uh, or, or just... To get some high rated cards, it would be a very nice. And uh, I'm looking forward to the team of the season, guys. Honestly, the card designs that we 90 Rosicki, the card designs that we've seen, there's going to be a team of the season, a team of the season Evo. I guess there'll be team of the season moments, but I haven't seen it. A team of the season plus and a team of the season live. I'm excited for it, guys. I'm excited. Uh, you know, especially with the exchange and the the, the player picks that are going to be here. Unless EA deny us that joy, which would be very sad. 
Um, but yeah, I'm I'm genuinely ready for team of the season. I feel like it could be massive for this account as well. You know, Arsenal most likely going to get a, a good amount of team of the seasons this season, even if uh, the league doesn't come our way uh, either. I still think that we are, you know, we're, we're, we're primed for at least three or four, I'd say, team of the seasons. And that's not including the opportunity from the women's side either. Um, so, with three more picks to go, only the baby Rosicki came out this time around. A couple of other 85s and stuff, but overall, this was actually a pretty horrific set of player picks. Yeah, literally just 90 rated Rosicki being the only good card for us here. Um, but let's go and rebuild the team, see what we can do. All right, guys, not too, too many changes. We are going to drop Van der Sar. Again, I think it crashed last time when I dropped him out of the team. Um, Cafu, Desai, Kivior, uh, Saliba, and Colt. The defensive-minded players, we're still going to stick to the 3-4-1-2 the three, four, one, two for the time being. Kivior left centre-back. I'm actually going to move Saliba into the central centre-back spot because of that intercept plus and Desai to right centre-back. Um, although his passing's not quite as good, uh, that might be a problem. Cafu, right mid. Cole, left mid. We're going to have Dennis Burkamp as the defensive-minded midfielder. With the shadow, he's got great pace, he's got great passing, he's got very good dribbling. He's got decent, very decent play styles, although no defensive play styles. But he has got, you know, 90 slide tackle, 94 stand tackle, and 80 interceptions. So he's not terrible defensively. Ginola at Cam, and then I've put a Hunter on Keane uh, to try him at striker. So what has he got for play styles? He's got finesse shot and power shot. He's got ping pass, which we're going to try and uh, utilize. Technical first touch plus. Press Proven, and Traveller. So that is going to be the squad. We're going to go and grab ourselves enough wins now to A, get Crouch done, start working on the next Evo. Crouch will come out of the team. That Evo will go into the team and get ourselves the foot rivals rewards. All right, guys, as we go into the gameplay for today, um, just some rivals gameplay today. We're going to do qualifiers probably on Friday. <laughs> Might try and get them through on Thursday if I can. But uh, yeah, just some rivals games. Wanted to get those Division 1 rewards. We've still got two weeks of this season, so I'm pretty confident I actually should be able to get up to Elite Division. Um, before I go to comments for today, um, I want to first talk about me playing different, actually. Um, you know, I actually, it's, it's quite funny because I, to I talked about it in yesterday's video, how I used to almost, almost like self-teach how to play the game or like small improvements to make that make a big difference by watching my gameplay back as I edited my videos. And I was on the Foot Weekly podcast yesterday, and it was the gameplay edition. I don't know when it goes live, but just Google Foot Weekly podcast with uh, host Ben, uh, Josh XLs, as you guys know, the video editor, and um, Japes. Do you guys remember Japes? I love Japes. Got a lot of time for Japes. Really enjoy Japes' uh, company. And uh, really enjoy talking to him. And he's obviously a very smart man and very, very, very good at the game as well. And I was uh, talking to Japes after the gameplay podcast, talking about a certain few things. And he's somebody that goes 20-0 and and likes to play with uh, fun cards and experimental cards, kind of similar to myself in many regards. You know, I've, okay, I've got some meta and sweaty cards in here, but for the most part, throughout my whole journey on Ultimate Team for years and years and years, I've never really delved perfectly into the specific explicit meta. I don't know why. It just doesn't really entertain me. And uh, I was explaining to him how, you know, like uh, there was a few things I know I do wrong, but I struggle to get right. And then the conversation developed and Josh pulled up the stream from the night before. One particular game that you guys saw yesterday where I went 4-0 down against the guy and ended up winning 5-4. And obviously one of the biggest things I have as an issue is defensive situations. And, you know, I'm led to believe that one of the best ways to defend is to not defend. You know, I, I say it to people all the time that ask me, in that, like, when you, you know, how do you defend? I'm like, you just don't. Just control a midfielder and bring them back or control an attacker and bring them back. And that's because when, I've, when I have, like, took some time out and watched some tutorials or just been watching some streamers and they've talked about their experience and how to defend and also my own experience of playing the game, it's like, man, every time I play this game, and an opponent doesn't control their back line, I just struggle to score goals. And so it was kind of one of those situations where James was like, no, he's like, I, I defend. Like, he, he's a very aggressive manual defender and he controls his defense quite a lot. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, so maybe I've been doing it 
not the wrong way, but the wrong way for the way that I want to do it. And uh, so he watched the game back with me and gave me some great tips and great advice on how to defend better. More, the, like the most appropriate thing that was important with that was player switching and which player I was controlling. And sometimes it's so simple, like this isn't a football game, right? And I've kind of drilled that into my own head over some years. But this isn't a football game. This is a game based on football, but I mean, it's an arcade game, right? And sometimes like some really simple, simple, obvious things go by the wayside where you're just like, yeah, that like that just makes perfect sense. James is like, you just control the wrong player and run them out of position. You just got to keep the player, you know, he's like, pretend it's real, real football. Just keep the play, the defender that you've switched into between the ball carrier and the goal. I was like, yeah, uh, that is literally like one of the primary fundamental rules you learn when you grow up playing football, right? Um, and so it's going to take some adjusting to kind of like change a little bit of my defensive style. But even just watching the game back with uh, with Ben, producer Luke, Josh and Japes, um, I was noticing things there. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, I was like, oh, I had a few chances. And I'm like, within those chances, I, ha I had the ability to do what I just did, what you just saw there, a chip ball over the top. Okay, I actually managed to win the second ball and then win the third ball. And I scored a goal off of it. And I was like, every time I kept, like, because we were pausing it a lot to, like, review it. Every time it was paused, I was like, ah, look at where my players are actually standing. This guy's in constant space when I'm in this situation. You know, every time I send, tend to use the right centre back and right mid on the right hand side, the right striker tended to just veer off into that space over on the right hand side. And not one time did I pick him out. And then eventually I did try and pick him out one time. And I just did the wrong pass choice. And so that's like, you know, working on pass selection and stuff. But it was like, for those of you that might be struggling on whatever win rank you're on, whatever division you're in, you might be in Division 5 wanting to be in Division 3. You might be a 6-win player wanting to get 9 wins. An 11-win player wanting to get 14 wins. Honestly, I would just urge you to just watch your game back and look out for your mistakes. Don't look out for the bugs in the game, the dumb bounce-back tackles in the game, your opponent doing cheesy things in the game. Just look for your mistakes, how you can improve. And I think it would be better. And, I, you know, I came into this uh, set of Rivals games just massively more confident in my own ability. And I did. I don't know how many losses are here because uh, I, I, th I only took two losses. I played about eight, eight games or so. Um, and I think I got one draw. But I was just better. And the reason why I was just better is because on a game, you know, on a game-to-game -game basis, instead of me winning a game 4-3 or losing a game 5-2 or something like that. I was defending way better, which mean, meant when I took my chances to score the goals, like in this game here, you know, we're 3-0 up, not conceding goals, managed to get the 4-0, I think he gets the rage quit after that. And it was like, damn, when, when you're just defending everything your opponent throws at you, and again, it's one of those obvious things, right? When you're defending everything your opponent throws at you, and yet you're taking even some of your chances, you don't have to be com completely... Uh, on, on top of it every time you know you, you still fall to miss chances obviously um people just tend to not want to play you so i had quite a few rage quits which was uh really really nice anyway your mouth yapping uh spencer says while you're trying out the various formations i would recommend giving the four triple two a go i usually don't like that one but gave a go a few weeks ago and all of a sudden i can't stop scoring i was also i've also found slow build up and possession to be effective tactics especially against people who use pressure tactics as you get way more support and passing options while moving up the pitch yeah, I actually, uh, I actually have tried the slow build-up and possession when I did the 4-3-3-5 or another formation that I used recently. Um, and I do like it. I don't have any... The only I only have one instruction in this team right here. Um, not every, every tactic is default and balanced. The only instruction I have is my left mid, Ashley Cole, to come back on defense uh, so that he moves into a back four so that I've got four defenders when I'm defending. Otherwise, I don't have any uh, tactics or instructions on this team. And uh, I actually, if you missed la like the last few of the last videos, I actually tried the 4-4-2 in last, sorry, or triple two in last weekend's weekend league, and I hated it. So I switched out. Um, Lolo Alan says they nerfed the 84 upgrade plus so, so hard today. Um, I don't think they nerf like 
like I know the community would love to kind of like think and believe that EA are kind of like on the fly manipulating your packs to whether or not you get good players. You just get lucky or unlucky, man. Like, you know, they're not guaranteed. They're 84 by sevens, right? There is every chance you get seven 84s in there because that, that would be within the pack probabilities, right? Um, you know, there was a couple of days there when the 83 by 10s came back that I opened 83 by 10s and I got nothing like an 85 at most out of three of them. And then the next day I got a couple of good cards and the next day I got a great card. And it's like, it really isn't. EA re like EA just couldn't care. Like, look at what look at the pack store packs. Look at the amount of cards. Look at the Evos. Look at the SBCs. EA don't care if you get a 93 Viali or not, man. It is just you. You just got unlucky. That's all. You just got unlucky in the uh, packs that you had. Um, the next comment is from uh, Paul. He says it's interesting that EA are not trying to ruin the players' fun in the menus by re-releasing the 80 plus 81 picks that go hand in hand with the exchange. They could easily have stopped releasing the picks. They didn't stop the grind. Got to give them credit for that. So. Fittingly, you're watching me open some picks here. I have been stuck in a loop of getting loads of fodder, putting it into the exchange, opening the exchange packs, getting a load more fodder from the uh, exchange packs, putting it back into the exchange, getting to a point where I'm like, I'm getting 15 or 20 duplicate players opening a 51 players pack, going and building a whole more, bunch more player picks, getting a load more fodder, and even using Team of the Week picks as you can see here, we're getting an 88. I think there's a 91 or something in here as well. Because of all the fodder that you get, it's just so, e it's so easy to get fodder. And I have I feel like over the last three, four, five days, I've actually been in a positive loop of I'm not losing... Like some, some weeks when we were doing it last week or the week before, eventually I'd run out and I'd be waiting for the daily stuff to refresh to get like a big 83 by 10 pack or something. This time around, I'm just not running out. I'm, I have infinite fodder. Like it's infinite. It genuinely is continuous. And uh, you're absolutely right, Paul. EA could have very easily, very comfortably quashed that by just releasing something different or not re-releasing the picks. And they haven't. And I hope that remains for team of the season because even though so many people have so many cards in their club now, so many top-end cards are fun to play with, people are actually engaged with it. And I think I personally am enjoying it I think I speak for the same for a lot of you guys watching it, um, watching the video, that it's way, way, way better like this. It keeps me on the game. It keeps me engaged with the game. It keeps me enjoying the game. And surely that's what they want. But anyway, guys, let's go and get our rivals rewards. All right, guys. So as you would have seen, not only did we get our seven wins, we did make it into Division 1. Um, playing really nicely at the moment, guys. Really enjoying playing the game again. Um, I, I, had, I did a uh, content, no, sorry, a gameplay podcast on Foot Weekly Pod with uh, Josh, Ben, and japes and afterwards uh was just having a little bit of a laugh saying how bad i was at the game and stuff and um japes gave me a few little pro tips and i feel like it's already you know it, it's going to take a while to adjust to them and stuff but i feel like it's already made a significant impact to the way i'm playing the game um which is fantastic you know sometimes it just takes that little bit of a uh, little bit of time as you can see here with uh javi alonso we need three more games now to get up to the uh, 10 games for the spanish legend and we've got one more day after today to complete this as well. Um, we'll get our sixth completion out of that. Does that mean I missed a day there? I don't think I missed a day. And then for Kola Moani, we've still got 14 days on him. Only need to play eight games to get it done. But one of the things that's a little bit more pressing, but I have been working on, is the Evos. Of course, we did finish Peter Crouch, uh, which was quite nice. This is the team I used in some of those games. And yes, I have actually been using Mohamed El Nenny. Uh, but we are not running out of time, but we're getting... It's, it's getting close enough. It's getting to that point where I'm like, oh, God, they're going to have to put some squad battles grind in. Uh, for El Nenny, we've got two days left. I need to do that fourth, t that third tier, play four games in Rivals or Champs, win three of them, and assist four goals with him, which we'll probably have to do in squad battles. I have Earths need six more wins uh, and scoring four goals, which could be done in Champs qualifiers uh, for that one because it's just regular wins. Uh, we need to start on Cedric, but we've got eight days. Same as Tommy Asu, eight days. And then the more the more pressing for time one is Pullover. We need to play three and score two. Uh, we need to play three and win three. And then we need to play four, win three, and assist four as well. So Pullover and El Nenny will get done in squad battles. But what we do have is our Division 1 Rivals Rewards. That's right. That's also going to give us some huge XP as well. So what do we get? We can either take a 100k pack. Prime gold players pack, two red gold packs, an 85 by four and 87 by two tradable. 
and then 700 XP and 1,000 qualification points. Or we can take two 100Ks, two primes, two rares, 185 by four, 287 by twos, and 40,000 coins. Or we can take two jumbo jumbos, two primes, four rares, 285 by fours, 287 uh, by twos. So the only thing we don't get from the untradeable one is we only miss out on 185 by four, but for 40,000 coins. Now, when you consider the tradable side of things, these packs I don't really care about, but these packs here, am I going to make more than 40,000 coins from them? I just don't think I will. Even if I did, like I think I'd prefer this set right here because 40,000 coins in the current game climate is very, very, very nice. Now, I know a lot of people are saving packs for whatever comes tomorrow and team of the season as well. I'm not necessarily saving packs. I'm also not not saving packs. What I think I'm going to do, I've already got two, maybe even three of them actually. No, I've already got two of them. I'm going to start, I'm going to carry on with the exchange into player picks, but I'm going to start saving my 51 player packs. So I'm going to try and build up 10, 20, 30 of them and just have as many 51 player packs as I possibly can, which will be obviously beneficial for two reasons. Number one is because we'll be able to rip them open and hopefully pack something cool if we get something cool in packs. But number two, it'll allow us to like fill the club back up again and, uh, you know, get ourselves um, get ourselves the player picks and things like that for whenever slash whatever uh, does actually come. So uh, of the first two, we've got a Jack Grealish there. Uh, I am going to go and put him into the exchange. I will be right back. All right, we are back with that. And uh, yeah, I think it's I've found it a lot easier the last couple of days to get the sort of 85 to 87 rated cards to continually put back into the exchange to the point where I genuinely have got an insane amount of informs and an insane amount of just high, like not even high rate fodder fodder from 89s. I've got two, two or three nineties, um, maybe even a 91. I can't remember what Benzema is. Oh, we get ourselves our first card. It's going to be Harry Kuehl. Be the big one this time, please. We've had the baby one two or three times. It's the baby one again, and I do believe he's a duplicate. And this is why I keep getting these 51 player packs, because Harry Kuehl is a dupe. We're going to go ahead and put him into the exchange. That's him taken care of. And this is what I mean by, like, it's just so easy. Do you know, do you know what I think has made the biggest difference this week of why I'm getting, like, why anybody, I suppose, is getting more sort of, like, fodder in general is because the 83 by 10, as nice as it was, quite often spat out a lot of 83s and 84s. Whereas I feel like the 84 by 7 is really good at giving out 87 plus rated cards. Um, so I, I just feel like it's been an, an infinite supply to the point where I genuinely have got every 83 and 84 in the game. It's like 20 85s, 30 86s. It's like I've just got so much fodder. Uh, and we're going to get ourselves another duplicate there as well with Cobell. So and look, look, look at all of this. Like, it's, like I'm not going to micromanage it right here for the sake of the video, but so silly to throw away. And that, guys, leaves us, I believe, with just the, the big packs. Yeah, so we've got now 351s, 19 and a 7 spare. We've got an 85 by 4. Still a very decent pack. Has every opportunity to have multiple walkouts in. Going to have at least one walkout. It's going to be Pedri, double walkout. Joao Cancelo, 286s. Could still be some big uh, heroes or icons in here, though. There's another Harry Kuehl, and they're all dupes. So I will be right back again. And with that saved, guys, that leaves us with the 87 by 2s, are they? To end off for today. First one doesn't look like it's going to contain a special card. Oh, it's going to be Harry Kuehl again, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Just be the big one this time, please. It's the baby Kuehl for the third time <laughs> i think it's cobell as well it is oh my days and then last but not least what an absolute massive duplicates we got there give us i mean i'm happy that we packed three heroes from our rewards last week of course we got Ginola. can we hit something big this week let's find out unless it's the hero at the start it's not a hero it doesn't look like it's going to be a hero it's going to be pop and Hopefully an 89 to give me another 89 for the exchange. 
starting with her. Let, let's skip it because it's not a special. Oh, it's Bruno Fernandes. So it's 288. It's both duplicates again. So both are going to go back into the exchange. But guys, for today, that is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, rate, and comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.